Now let's take a look at loops. Now, the, I don't want to spend much time on loops just because if you've seen the C++ Crash Course series, then you're familiar with all the loops that C Sharp offers. We had the for loop, the while loop, do while loop. And what we're going to do is do a quick demonstration on how they work, and we're going to use arrays as our test subject. This is the array program that we worked on last time. So we can just save all these files. File, save all, and then we'll go to file, and we'll do close. So now we're back to the screen. So then we can do another project, file, new, project, C sharp, windows, empty project, and we'll call this loops. So we all know what to do now, right? Right click on the project name, add, new item, code file, and we'll call this C sharp loops. Eh, clever enough. So we'll go back to using system, class, my loops, that's just the name of the class. It could be anything you want it to be. Public, static, and this time we'll do int main. Yes. So main's going to return a value now. Control F5 to test it. Uh-oh. What have I done? I'm going to select no. Ah, uh, you see that error? Since main is now expected to return an integer, in order for this program to work, I have to return something. So just for test, I'll do return zero. Control F5. There she goes. All right, life is good. So let's change the the title of our console to C Sharp Loops, so everybody knows what we're doing here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we'll do a for loop, because the for loop is pretty much the most useful one. So for, same syntax as what we're used to, for, condition, and then code. And just like for loops in C++, we can declare our variables within the loop. The main reason that we went over the variable types is so that we can use them in these loops to make our programs more efficient. So if I'm going to create a for loop that's going to be relatively small, why would I use an integer and take up four bytes of memory when I can use a byte and just take up one byte of memory? It doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you start building big applications, it really, really makes a big, big difference. So why don't we do this? We'll do four, and we'll create a byte, and we'll call it i, start it at zero, while i is less than, I don't know, we'll just make up a number. While i is less than 10, i++. And we'll do console dot write line, and we'll do i. So we're going to print out to the screen 0 through 9. Control F5. Excellent. Perfect. And right before that, what we're going to do is we're going to do console dot write line. And inside here, we're going to tell the user what kind of loop we're using, the for loop. And to make this even more crazy, console dot foreground color equals console color dot green. And after we print the title of for loop, we're going to change it back. And I think we're going to use, we'll use gray, control F5. So it says for loop with the color, and then the rest of it is in the normal co gray console color. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, this is what the for loop is like in C Sharp, much like every other programming language you've seen a for loop in. So let us copy all this code, and we're gonna place it two lines below the for loop. Let me try to get all this on the screen. All right, so we got the public static main function here. Okay, so we're gonna change this to while, and we're gonna also change this to while. Perfect. So here, underneath the changing the console color to gray, let's create a byte data type, and we'll call this x, and we'll set it equal to zero. Now, the for in a while loop is not going to be for; it's going to be while. And within these parentheses, our condition is going to be a little bit different. So the the condition is going to be while x is less than ten. So we're going to do a similar. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the for loop, but do it with a while loop. Then we're going to print out x, and then after we do that, we're going to do x plus plus. So we're going to be incrementing x by 1. So we should get the exact same output as before, except for it's going to be with a while loop. So we'll do control F5. Here's the for loop in green with 0 through 9, the while loop with 0 through 9. Perfect. Now these two loops start with the condition, and then it runs the code. So then the other alternative is to have a loop that starts in a loop and ends with a condition. This is what the do while loop is. So we'll copy all this. We got while and all that happy stuff. Come down two more lines, and I apologize that we're running out of space here. But you also do have the luxury of being able to pause the screen and code it. So here we'll have do while. And then down here, we'll show do 
while. And we're going to do bytes. I'm going to create another one, even though I know this is not very efficient. Actually, you know what? Let's practice efficiency here. So since I've declared byte here, I can reuse it here. Just start it over at x. Now with the do while loop, the while condition is going to be at the end, the end of the block here. And we're just going to start with the command do. So do all this while this. So it's going to be do console right line x, which is going to start off at 0. And then x is going to go up by 1. And it's going to check. And if it fails the condition, it will keep going until the while loop says get out. So now we'll do the semicolon at the end of the while loop because we have to. Control F5. Here we go. We have the exact same loop for all of these. We've got the for loop, the while loop, the do while loop. And I can make this bigger so we can see them all. Perfect.